Hi, everybody. Good morning. Uh, thanks for being here. I know you don't have a choice, but <laughs> thank you anyway. Um, so my name is Susanna. I'm with the League of Women Voters, and that's not the chart that I should be having now. <laughs> I'm kind of giving you too much of an advance notice here. Um, but I'm a volunteer, and uh, we are here to show you how to get ready to vote for the very first time. And uh, even though it says League of Women Voters, uh, it historically started with the women's suffragists uh, mov movement, but now it's open to anybody. So anybody can join, Can doesn't have to be a woman to join. Uh, there is no age requirement, anything. Anybody who's interested in doing stuff with voting can join the League of Women Voters. And then here I have my other fellow volunteers, Susan. Nita and Joan, and they are here to also help things uh, make things that happen. What we're going to do is going through our presentation and trying to kind of get interested in voting. And we're going to talk about power, the power of your vote, money, how you can make money doing civic things. And if that is not enough to draw your attention. We have candy for participation. So hopefully y'all enjoy participating a little bit. So first, let's kind of get together, like maybe find groups of two or three folks and start talking about issues you care about and also what kind of changes you like to see. Like, you know, again, get like in two, three, four people, whoever, like, little group that you can talk to and we're going to be talking about that for a couple of minutes and then after that we're going to just go over and see what kind of things you you came up with there's no right or wrong answer it's just stuff that you care about or things that you don't like so much and you want to see change so just go and then we'll stop in a couple of minutes <laughs> All right, let's <clears throat> just uh, 30 more seconds and then we will wrap. All right, so who wants to volunteer to say what you're talking about? There is candy involved or bracelets. Anybody? Just a... Uh, inflation. Okay. Anybody else? Women's rights. Anybody else? Have one here. Yeah. <clears throat> I couldn't hear. Gun loss. <clears throat> Couple more volunteers here. Education. Got one here up front. The border. The border. All right. So we 
are going to wrap this activity now and then but there are going to be plenty of uh, opportunities to participate throughout the, the presentation and before we talk about issues uh i want you all to know that in texas right you might talk about the elections in november but we have lots of elections every year throughout the year so even if you're not going to be 18 in time for this election for the november election you're going to be able to use your power to vote really soon. So just, you know, I know like it's kind of nice to be able to vote in a big election, but you'll be able to vote in other elections really soon. And about the issues, you see there, we elect people at different levels of government. We elect city level officials. We elect uh, president, Congress, judicial folks. We elect even school board. And those are all people who make laws or make decisions that affect pretty much every issue we think about. So we're talking about inflation. Inflation is usually something decided that, that is influenced at the federal level. Uh, protecting women's rights can be all the way from uh, local all the way to federal, depending on kind of uh, protections. Uh, for instance, gun laws also is something there, there might be some federal regulations, but a lot of it is left to the states and sometimes even the cities. And public education or education in general, depending if it's like at the at college level or high school, elementary school level, the access to education, if it's public access, if it's free college, or if it's access to private education, that it's also a mix of federal and local laws. And uh, the border it tends to be more federal, but there could be some activities that are local. So <clears throat> the takeaway is there's a lot of elections that are law levels, and all of them affect this. And a lot of times, the very local elections are the ones that affect us the most. And I like to use the silly example of a pothole. If there's a pothole in your street, who do you think you call? Anybody thinks you call the president? The city. I heard the city there. Yeah, it's usually the city, maybe the county, depending on the road, but it's definitely not the president. And uh, so this is just one example of things that affect us directly locally, but things like, you know, all the parks and... Uh, the quality of the, the streets, lighting, uh, even uh, what kind of business can go where, all those things, uh, the rules are dictated at, at the local level and by people who we elect. <clears throat> so now uh, I'm going to ha give you all another chance to get some candy. In, in the U.S., we have presidential elections every four years. But in between the presidential elections, we have what's called midterms. And in Texas, our governor uh, is elected at the midterms and stays elected for four years. So whenever we're not voting pro for president in Texas, we're voting for the governor. Anybody here would venture a guess in 2022, when we elected our governor, what percentage of people voted? Like any number, just tell me if you have any guesses or if you know. Over there, 57. We'll let go like four, 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 four guesses. 75 over here, there. So two more. 30 over here. 64. All right. So. It was actually 46%, 46% of the people who are registered to vote, voted in that election. If you count everybody that could be eligible, that number drops a little bit to like the high 30s. But the takeaway is fewer than half of the folks that could vote show up to an election where we elect our governor. Like, it's a big election. It's not like something that people would consider small. But it's still fewer than half of the folks voted. Meaning, if you're in this classroom and you kind of put an imaginary line about halfway, 
this side of the classroom, call the shots for who got elected. But that person, the people who got elected, the governor and all the other positions, affect everyone in here. And when you go to local elections, it can get much worse. It can get 10% or even lower. Even like a pro there was a proposition about police accountability in Austin, and th there was a lot of discussion about it. So it was well known. But even then, only 10% of the people actually show up to vote. And whether in whatever side of that you were, if you did not show up, you just stuck with the choices of the 10%. So to illustrate that, we're going to do a pretend pizza party. We have money for candy, but pizza is like, please just pretend one. Besides, it'll be really hard for us to kind of carry pizzas to every classroom. So the pizza already has cheese and tomato, tomato sauce. You're just choosing one topping. And this is kind of a weird place that they only allow us to do a bulk order for one kind of pizza for everybody. We can't kind of have like multiple types. So each person gets to choose one topping and one top on only. And then once the vote is done, that's the pizza that everybody's going to get. So if you like pepperoni, please raise, uh, not pepperoni, uh, mushroom, please raise your hand and keep it up so that I can kind of get a sense for it. All right, if you like pepperoni, put your hand on your head and then keep it up. I mean, keep it there, right? So now, if you like pineapple as your topping, stand up. Okay, so, Here's how it works. If everybody voted, pepperoni would win by a landslide. So that would be an ideal election where everybody votes. The majority wins, right? Like the, the folks that didn't like that, they so, but it's like, but it represents the will of the majority. But what happens is that the folks that like pepperoni, they know pepperoni is popular. They were talking about it on social media. Everybody's saying, yeah, I'm voting pepperoni. Let's do pepperoni. So they took for granted that pepperoni was going to win. However, the folks that like pineapple, they know their opinion is not that popular, but they don't care because it's their preference and they're passionate about it. So in a low turnout election, guess who voted? Pineapple folks. So in a low turnout, everybody's eating pineapple, whether you like it or not. And kudos for the pineapples to stand up and use your voice. And I know it sounds cheesy. Uh, it's a pizza after all. But uh, okay, that's what's worse. <laughs> but what happens in reality is really similar to that. Low turnout elections that only a few folks vote it's usually the people who are passionate about issues that show up. And they usually don't really reflect the population at large because they're really passionate about that thing. And most people in the population might have different feelings about that. So it's like you get, you might get lucky and you agree with those five or 10%. But a lot of the times that's not what happens. And okay, so... Since low turnout or any turnout doesn't always represent one to one the people, the, the distribution of the population, we're going to go through and explain how uh, that breaks down. So, anybody here would like to guess which voting group tends to vote more? Younger folks, middle age, older? You can even say like an age range if you want. 1825, middle age, old people. Okay, one more there, younger. So I'm going to start here. And if you have, if you have a colorful card, uh, if you were giving a colorful card, uh, so you see these bars here, each one of those bars represent the people who voted in 2022. And each one is age group. So the first one is 18 to 24, then 25 to 30, and it goes on and on and on. So if you have a colorful card, 
you can see on the front of the card a little label that gives the age. So you are one of these bars. If you look at this, there's really no clear pattern. It's like you can see a little bit drop at older age, but it's like it's generally, it's kind of like it goes up and down. There's no clear pattern. Now, pay attention. Those are solid bars. Look at the hash bars and when the screen comes back. Can you all see what the, the, the hash bars mean? So can you see, what can you tell from the, the folks that are in the, you know, the youth group, like they are in the hash? What can you tell between the two bars? What you can, can tell about that? So who voted? Which ones voted, right, on the, on the youth group here? Which bar is bigger here? Yeah, which of the, the bars are bigger, the hash or the solid? So the hash are the folks who didn't vote. The solid the folks that voted. So in those age groups, there were more people who did not vote than there were people who voted. But if you go as people get older, there are more people in the solid bar who voted than there are people who didn't. Which means that as people get older, they're more likely to use all the power they have, even if they don't have as much power. Even if there is more young people out there, Folks, as they get older, they tend to make sure they don't leave anything on the table. And if you want to see this as a percent, sometimes a little bit easier to visualize, folks in the you know, 30 and under tend to vote a 30% of uh, turnout. So it's like about only 30% of the folks that could vote in that age group vote. But when you start getting like in the 60s and 70s and 80s, then you're seeing folks voting like you know, 60, 70% or more, so they just don't leave a whole lot of stuff out there. And the question that I'm going to leave here uh, as we go to the next activity is, what are you going to do about it? And now is the fun part. Who has the colorful cards? Who has number three? If my videos could help me, number three comes here. Uh, who has V1, the letter V and the number one come here? And who has N1? N1, come here. So if you could stand like here, here, like in the back here. Now, the other numbers. So start coming. Who has 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? You see there's a little tab with a tiny little Velcro. And there is, in the back of it, there is a little Velcro. So you hold on to that. So if you're number 4, attach to number 3. Yeah. And attached to four. So it's like we're attaching the numbers in sequence. And then you attach to N2. So we are going to attach 3 to 12. Yeah, you're going to be the end of that chain. So V1, who has V1 and V2? Who has V1? Who has V1? I see V2. Who has V1? Who has a, a small blue card? I haven't seen V1. Who know. has V1? Okay. Well, wow. If you have a blue one that says V1, come on up. V1. We have a backup one. I gave it out. I know I did. We have a backup one. That's all right. So are all the those uh, line up? The, are all the other ones line up? Three, four, five, six, six, seven. I don't have seven. Who is seven? Who is eight? Who is nine? I have eight. Nine here. Nine. Come on up nine. All right, and that will be that. So, uh, so you have V two. So you attach this one to the top of V two, and then now you're in charge of those two. Hang on to that. So if you no longer have a card, you can go back to your uh, that you can get candy and bracelets. Uh, thank you. Uh, all right, and then the two of you can uh, attach to each other, and then one of those one of you stays, and the other goes. So now, uh, since she left, you can stay and hold this because the number three left. And you can put this one here. All right. So here, uh, so you became the student here. Can you get in, uh, where you can, uh, everybody can see? So you and you, uh, what's your name? Andrew. Can you just stand next to Nita here? Just next to it. So do you see three 
to 12 here, those are the people that go like 31 and older. Like, so each bar is one of those callers and they are assigned. The, the blue and the green ones are 18 to 30. So if you look at it, the youth vote is kind of a small group compared to how everybody else voted, right? But what if the young voters that didn't vote but could came here and start voting? Like the folks over 30 keep voting the ways they, they always have, but everybody that is, uh, it just goes all the way to the end. Every, I can hold. Yeah, it's the other side. So what happens here is that if everybody who could have voted, that are young folks voted, can you see the difference? How much more power you have? Thank you, a round of applause for the folks that were brave enough to come here. So this is the point. Look how much power you have. And if you're a person that kind of sees number better than just images, I'm going to kind of show it here. So when we have just the folks that the way they voted are writing 2022, 19% of the, the votes came from folks under 30. But if all the folks that didn't vote, that were t uh, 18 to 30, didn't vote, start showing up, all of a sudden you have 41% of the total voting power, meaning that you could control pretty much every election that you decide to. doesn't matter how you vote. As a group, you would have control because even the most lopsided elections are won by something like maybe 20, 25%. So in general, if you set your mind to it as a generation, starting now, you can decide the outcome of any elections. And that's how I would like you to think about it. You have power. And how to use your power? Well, in Texas, did anybody know that in Texas you cannot register to vote online? Did you all think you could just go online and get registered? Yeah, so no, you can't. Uh, Texas is one of seven states that we cannot do online voter registration. But you're in luck because we are here to help you. And in order to be able to register to vote, you have to be a U.S. citizen. So, like, how do you know if you're a U.S. citizen? If you're born in the U.S., you automatically are a citizen. If you're like me, I was born in Brazil, but I was naturalized. So I am a citizen also. Or if your parents were naturalized, or if your parents were military, or uh, there are many other ways you might be a citizen. If you're not sure about it, at the end, when we go around registering, we can uh, answer some questions one-on-one. -on -one. If you're really not sure, you, we can give you something you can take home with you, and then you can talk to your parents. You have to be 18 years old to vote in any election, but you can register two months before, because in Texas, you have to be registered 30 days before an election. So you, if you wait till your birthday, you'll be out of luck. So if your birthday was on or before, if you're born on or before November 10 of 2006, you can register to vote today. You're going to have to be 18 on November 5th to be able to vote in this election, but you can vote, you can register today even if you're not old enough to vote in that election. And I always like to point out the, the felony uh, portion because this is something that each state has different rules. In Texas, if a person commits a felony, it could be a state felony or a federal felony, they are initially lose their rights. But once they become off paper, they are able to register to vote again. And that's a way to regain, you know, a lot of the, 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 what makes you a person, right? Once you've kind of completed your sentence and everything. So I'm putting this more for you to think in the future, right? Like if in, like right now in the fall, most people are not really ready for when they're going to go, but it's always good to register where you are at the moment. And then later, it's not that hard to change. It's much harder to register the first time than change. Once you register the first time, you don't have to keep repeating. But if you move, you can update. It's a lot easier. Uh, and then when you go to college, you can choose if you keep voting uh, in your hometown or if you vote at college. You have to choose one or the other. Or if you go to military, if you, if you move for a job, then you have to get registered there. But those are things that we can talk in more detail if something you already talked. And once you're registered, that's the first step. But remember that 46% of folks that voted in the governor election, 
those were folks that were registered to vote. So registering is the first step, but it's not enough. If you register and didn't vote, you're still stuck with somebody else's pizza. And uh, here, I'm going to kind of go walk through a little bit the plan, not in the plan, but how, how you go about voting, right? A lot of people don't vote because they uh, don't know what's on the ballot. They don't know how to find information and they do not want to be uninformed. So the League of Women Voters puts this nonpartisan voters guide that sort of that happens uh, exists in paper form, but also digitally, which is really cool. If you go to vote for one one, you enter your address, is lists of what's on your ballot, and the league sends questions to the candidates, and they publish exactly what the candidate answers. So it's a great way, especially for the down ballot races that you might not hear as much about, or if there are things like propositions on the ballot, it's really helpful. And uh, the other thing, too, that people neglect to think that your friends are good resources for that. You don't have to agree with what their vote is on, but they usually, if you find somebody or get together with a group of folks that want to learn about candidates, you can split up and get maybe like each person uh, researches two, three or four candidates. So it's not that overwhelming. And then you can each make your decision, but at least it's a lot easier to find the information if you don't have to find it all. And it's totally fine to skip things on the ballot if you're not comfortable, but try to pick, you know, as many things as you can that you can uh, study. The other thing here is that once you made your choices, you cannot take your phone with your notes. So write a paper note. Uh, and if you forget, a poll worker can help you. Anybody here has any guesses of why we cannot use your cell phone at the polls. It can be in your pocket, in your backpack, but you cannot pull your cell phone and start using it for your notes. Anybody has a guess why you cannot use your cell phone? Anyone? Could be a distraction. Uh, anybody? What can you do with your cell phone besides calling? Take pictures. Yes, a distraction it's not against the law, but it would be really annoying. Uh, but using the phone, the reason, the number one reason is because you don't want somebody to take pictures of you while you're casting your ballot because they might be able to record your ballot. Your ballot is secret. If you want to share your information, you go on social media and say who you voted for. But you don't want somebody to actually see what's on your ballot because it could serve as a way to intimidate or to share something that you don't want other people to know. So that is one thing. The other thing that is kind of cool is that in Travis County, you can vote anywhere in the county, either early voting or election day. Uh, and we have early voting, meaning you don't have to vote on November 5th. You, you have many other days to vote. And we have little cards with the, with the dates. The the thing that is really cool about Vote Travis website is that there is this map where you can find the polling place that is closest to where you are, and the little colorful signs they tell time, so you can see if there is a waiting time or not, uh, and it helps you choose. But the key is this election is good to have long lines on election day, so if you can go vote early, you're more likely to not have to wait for a long time. And if you go vote on election day because you want the experience of voting on election day, go with friends and plan to stay in the line until you're done voting. Last thing is you need a voter ID to vote in Texas. And there are seven types of what's called primary types of ID or type of AIDs. And I don't know if just by looking at that, there's a bunch of kinds, but do you notice something that is here that, that's not here that you all wear every day, what is missing from this list? Student ID. So student ID is not a good enough uh, ID to go to the polls. If you do not have any of those, you can still vote. And we'll talk after. And because in high school, you might not have yet any of those IDs. Uh, there are other IDs you can use. You just have to sign an extra piece of paper that says, I don't have any of those. So it's just a a small change, but if you have one, use that. At the end, again, when we go around registering folks, we'll talk more about how to do that. All right, this is here as a hint, but before we go into that, who volunteers to, to participate in a five seconds pretend phone call? I need one volunteer. 
One person. All right. So what's your name? Shania. Shania? All right. I'm going to go old school here. Hello. Hi, Shania. How are you? Great. Uh, do you want to go to the movies? All right. Bye. Okay. What happened here? Are we going to the movies? No, right? Because we said we're going to the movies, but what's missing? Yes. Same idea. If I would call you and say, hey, let's go vote, and you go like, sure. Same idea, right? Uh, so if you want to make sure you vote, you need to have a plan. You need to know when election is happening. And within those days that you can vote, put in your calendar a day that works for you. You need to know where to go, right? We showed a little map where you can find all the different polling places. And you need to know how to get there. Do you have your own ride? Do you need a ride? Can you walk there? What are the options? And then what you're wearing. Anybody has any idea what you cannot wear to the polls? Any guesses? Your political shirts. Yes, you cannot wear shirts that have party, party slogan, candidates, or if there's propositions, anything, vote yay or a, or vote nay or a, or whatever. It, it, it even passed candidates, if they are linked to parties, you can't wear that. And if you show up to the polls, don't panic. The poll worker is going to ask you to either go to the restroom and flip your t-shirt or put a sweatshirt over. Or in Travis County, we have this gorgeous paper bib that we give to people to cover their shirt or buttons. Uh, and nobody really wants to look that like it's worse looking than hospital gown. But you can still vote. You just will have to cover up because it's considering that you're trying to influence voters at the polling place. You can influence voters outside. But once you're there, it's just between you and the voting machine. And go vote with your friends. Make a plan with your friends because if you make a plan with your friends, you're much more likely to stick to it. You don't want to let your friends down. And then go eat pizza or have ice cream or something. And last part of it is, yes? I just want to say that at Centerville, usually 99.9% and the and the and the typhoon yeah they they actually are defined already is the typhoon place and not the ty the typhoon and the and the rock gym are the locations that are closest to here um so when you get there the first thing you're going to do is show your id if you don't have the id the poll worker is going to explain the options you have. And again, if you don't have an idea, we'll talk about it at the end. Then we vote electronically, but there is a paper ballot as a confirmation. So you get your paper ballot, has a barcode, you put in the machine, make your choices in the touch screen like you use on your phone. Then after that, you print your ballot, you get a chance to see the printed choices, and you really only have voted once you walk to the scanner that is kind of sits on top of a big black bin and you scan your ballot and you get an I voted sticker. There is a thing that very few people know. If you see, if you look at your ballot, and it's like, oh no, I messed up. I made the wrong choice for this race or that race. You can actually go talk to the poll worker. They will cancel your ballot and check you in again and you start over. So it's like you actually have a do-over. You can actually do that up to three times. Uh, I mean, you have three chances to get it right. Uh, so it's just good to know that you don't have to pin it. And the election dates are here. And now we're good to give you a card with election dates so you don't have to worry about it. But it's like we have November 5th is election day. But we have 12 days of early voting between November, uh, October 21st and uh, November 1st. Most important, if you know anybody that needs to register to vote, October 7th is the deadline. And we're not only voting for president. We're voting for president, for Senate, for all the members of Congress. Uh, we're voting for the Texas Senate and Texas House. 
We have in Texas, we elect our Texas Supreme Court and Court of Appeals. We elect county officials. We elect judges. We elect city officials, depending on the city, it by being November or May. And uh, we also elect school board. Uh, Pflugerville is kind of funny because the uh, school board is in May, but uh, city officials are in November. And so it kind of depends on where you are. It might be a different time. And here comes another example of how much power you actually have because we show like collectively as philosophically you have a lot of power but this is a more even like direct power that you have in some local elections so in 2022 in the city of austin one of the city council districts that you know the person is in charge about to about of about like 100 100,000 people that race was won, won by 343 votes. On, and also that same year, there was a primary race for county commissioner and that there was nobody running later. So it was like this person also won their election by 248 votes. And this person is in charge, in charge of a quarter of the entire Travis County. So this is a person that's in charge of a quarter million people. Anybody knows, has any idea how many seniors you have? Here in this high school, like roughly 450. So there are more seniors in this high school than the number of people who changed and uh, uh, had the outcome of those elections. And specifically at the county level, usually most folks that go to high school live somewhat geographically close. And because a quarter of the county, it's all in the same area, there's a really good chance that most of you live in the same county commissioner district. So you could together easily decide the outcome of that election. And that's not a one-off thing. It happens a lot in a lot of the elections, the local elections. Uh, and some elections you even are won by like, you know, three, four votes. And once in a while there is even a coin clause, which is the absolute worst way to win an election or to lose an election. Because if you win, you don't care, right? Okay. So now let's see if I got everybody interested. Didn't we mention money early on? Here's the money shot. If you are too young to vote, uh, you can still uh, be a poll worker. And in fact, anybody older than 16 on election day can sign up to be a poll worker. And you make money. And it's an excuse day off. And it's great for the resume. And it's a great experience. It's a great way to learn how to participate. It's a great way to get your friends less nervous about voting. And it's a super cool way. I'm going to move this chart, but we I'll put it back in just a sec because this is that this is kind of a wrap for the presentation. So we're going to answer questions. We're going to help you register to vote today if you can. We give you mail forms if you need for friends or if uh, if you not quite ready to register yet And we will kind of show you how to sign up to be a, a poll worker And if you want if there's any charts that you are interested in you can take a photo But we are also going to share with your teachers so they can share any parts of it that you find interesting with you uh, So I'm going to put this back and now we're going to go around our volunteers are going to go around uh, and if, you, if the QR code is not working, I also have uh, those little cards. So our volunteers are going to go around and see who is ready to register to vote. Remember, you can register two months before you turn 18. So if you're born on or before November 10, you can register to vote today. And we have little cards with information. So after they register, we can. There is a white card on the form. Is that anybody who would like us to send a text reminder? And by us, it's like it's really going to be a group of volunteers from the league. It's it's hard usually from the screen, but I have the. Yeah, we have the the QR code. Yeah. Yeah, so and this this is you don't you don't submit today. You oh, and I need to turn turn off my video. Hold on. Just hold on to this for a sec.